Yo what's up guys this is Happy No with another Guild Wars 2 PvP video and this time with the core Necromancer showing you this um, old school vanilla build with tons of Condi removal not Condi removal what am I saying <laughs> boon removal and what else can I say it is a pretty fun build using my flesh bomb here the first thing that you will notice here is that I'm playing really defensively and then corrupt this guy trying to apply some more corrupt corrupt him one more time apply some more of this corrupt now one more time corrupt one more time <laughs> here we go use my healing skill and now when my team is about to be ready I'm gonna use my elite skill here and just apply a lot of conditions oh my goodness I'm about to die as well yep um, that was really bad this enemy ranger is playing with conditions so heavily holy man what is going on here we go auto attacking a little bit trying to cleave go for the stomp I have no stability left <laughs> Okay, target. Okay, my team is not able to deal <laughs> enough damage. <laughs> so I go for far point. Uh, let the flesh bomb here. So he's a little bit in a better position. Laying down a mark there. Hmm. Now you can see it here. What I try to do is just debate the enemy players here. He will dodge this. He dodged. Corrupt. Corrupt. Corrupt him. Here we go. Corrupt. Auto attack. Corrupt. Corrupt. <laughs> Trying to fear him. Okay, it is too stupid because the stupid firebrand is just entire time. Helping this guy out. Here we go. Fear. I should have corrupted the stupid firebrand first before I go for something else. Uh, auto attacking here, reviving this guy, I will make it, I will make it, no I will not, yeah I made it, trying to first interrupt, elite skill here, stun break out of this, corrupt this guy, corrupt him one more time, and he's really low now, Auto attacking him, no one is trying to revive him, and he will just die here. Is he about to die? He's not. Okay, going for the stomp now. Hello, I'm not stomping. For what reason? Uh, easy kill, solo kill, by the way. <laughs> my team. Where's my team? Okay, this guy I can revive for sure. Easy revive. Um, yeah, let's go against this guy here, really. Let's kill this guy. Let's kill this guy. Holy man! Reviving this guy again. Go oh, faster, 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 faster. Port back. Killing this guy. Can I? Yes, we can. <laughs> it's okay, though. Removing those conditions. Running away. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Run, 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 run. Easy stun break. This guy just wants me. Easy retreat. Where's this guy? Conditioning. Easy getting out of this. He's just chasing me for whatever reason. <laughs> okay. Trying to get the decap here first. Corrupt. Need to get out first. I need to play it safe. Um, let's go far. This guy's alone. I can do more. Because my team needs to learn better focusing enemy players. Okay, I'm out of combat. That's great. Do we have two players now here? Yes, we do have, but never mind. We still gonna attack this guy first. Even though this guy's also dead. Cleave. Auto attack, auto attack. This stupid drone. Shit, this guy gets revived. <laughs> Easy clap. This guy is dead as well. Um, I don't know if you might see it here or not, but the build is all about really being annoying. <laughs> it is just about removing boons. I was like thinking, why is my team not removing this? We have this guy on the chill. Okay. Shooting those people. Finally, we might be getting here something. Fear. Okay, my team is really too slow, man. They need to do much better now. <laughs> no, we are getting decapped on our clothes. At least the warrior gets far. Hopefully, if we can ha hold this far, it will be perfect for us. Um, Mesmer is losing only one, or what? Leave mid, leave mid. Um, it is, uh, it, it is. Uh, it is a difficult game to play because it's ranked arena by the way um, I can't expect for my allies to be the best players <laughs> okay the mesmer will lose that cap again but I try to go far therefore let's see maybe I can just troll those people can we troll them oh this guy is annoying No, okay, at least now I will get the decap on mid, which is perfect for me. And we even might get this guy here. Auto attack, auto attack. No, what, what has he done? Auto attack, auto attack. Fear, fear, fear. Elite skill. Elite skill. I can't revive this alone. Oh my goodness, man. Why are they dealing so much damage right now? Which one is, is it? I got so much damage. Burning. Burning. It's the scourge. <laughs> Going far. 
No, my team is just dying. This mesmer is doing nothing. Fuck. We have a dragon hunter and a core guardian. One of them should just uh, hold the cap, man. I don't know. I used my flash bomb here to port a little bit faster. And now we need to go far. I don't care. We need to get far decapped before they decap us. Again, laying down a. Uh, yeah, decap. Oh, he's playing hammer. Okay. So I try to decap mid now, and someone has to go close. Get this. The core guardian died as well. Oh my goodness. This game is done, basically, but. Oh shit. Oh my goodness. I'm sucking so much. But you can see this here. I have so many bunkers. My team should never die, actually. But they ain't able to, to maintain anything here. Especially this core guardian, uh, this dragon hunter here is playing something really weird. Corrupt. You can see this how powerful uh, you can be as a core necro. I corrupted this uh, ranger and destroyed him with two fears. <laughs> so now let's go ahead against this guy first. Trying to fear. Corrupt. And both are dead. Meanwhile, the enemies have again their far point fully capped, and this is so annoying. I'm trying to fear this guy off. Yes. Fear done pretty well. Corrupt. We ain't getting the decap right. Nope. We won't get this decap here if we don't. Oh, I have no target. Come on. We need to target this guy now. We got it, we got it. <laughs> no. <laughs> if we're killing those people fast enough. <laughs> we might get it, we might get it. No, 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 elite, elite, heal, heal, heal. <laughs> no. You can see this, I just turned the game <laughs> in the last seconds. <laughs> That's so stupid, damn it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what I love about those, um, how to say, it, the low tier games. Because if you play decent, if you play decent moves, how to say it, if you, if you go on the right time on the right spots, you just get so much going on. And you saw I got tops at revives and the uh, offense. And now to the build. I don't know if it's like the meta build, but a combination of it, I would say. Um, I'm using Deadshot Amulet with Rune of the Traveler for the mobility because as a core necro, you'll have shitty mobility. And once you are off, off fight, you have this, which allows you to move much faster. And with the Deadshot Amulet, you will have longer condition duration which means, um, especially here with this one as well, 10% longer condition duration, um, you have here like about 70% normal boons that you apply to enemies with longer duration. And this rocks especially because, not just the fear, because fear is most of the times 100% duration. So this rocks especially, especially, especially because when you corrupt the enemy players, the corrupts, the corrupted boons will have also a little bit longer duration, in my opinion. If it works properly, if not, then it makes no sense. <laughs> I need to test it out, but that was just my initial thought. And not just that, but your auto attacks here. You can see tier torment, for example, 6 seconds. If you remove this one here, um, you will have torment for 4.5 four seconds. And the same goes with all your conditions that you apply, also with your auto attacks. If you have the Deadshot Amulet, your conditions will just l stick much longer to the enemy players. Um, to the condition damage, where was it shown here? Ba -ba 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 here, 1300, which is quite, 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 quite decent. Your HP pool is 25k and your Shroud Life Force is 20k. So that's, for me, it's like more than enough because I've seen people using other amulets, but in my opinion this makes more sense you have vitality condition damage expertise the main things that you need for a condition build 
um, especially because you are playing here a condition build and then you go with um, scepter and what was it warhorn <laughs> i want to say torch because it looks like a torch here scepter warhorn and staff i'm using here sigil of battle with sigil of agility because when you swap to this you can just auto attack here and with your auto attacks bleed your foe bleed your foe and then the last one is bleeding and poison and that's especially nice against downed enemies if you have sigil of agility allowing you to automatically triple attack the enemy player with this then sigil of battle to increase your power level which means additional condition damage with your while you have 1300 you will have like 15 1500 and it will just destroy the enemy players you saw the the enemy ranger i just feared him twice he was dead because when he's feared when you remove his conditions he has nothing left and he will die air conditions boons on the staff sigil of annulment with sigil of energy because you saw a little bit um, how much i was cleaving how, how much i was doing work on the firebrand better said but my team was not focusing him properly because i removed with sigil of annulment with my with my corrupt boon with my feast of corruption with my death shroud i removed so many boons from this guy but my team was not focusing him so yeah he was surviving that so long because me alone i can do really a lot against a single player basically what i can do is in a good one one if i fail if i don't fail my corrupts i can beat everything like how to say it uh, that is like a firebrand scrapper weaver you should be able to beat them pretty hard with this especially weavers or scrappers with the stability trait lines with the boons you can corrupt them entire the entire time and then just destroy them with this and that's your main purpose here you are there to corrupt enemy players and to just be annoying and as you saw i tried a little bit to keep the distance to to show you how to play it properly but therefore you need also a good team to support you as well let's go with the first blood magic um it's like the main trait line here to increase your survivability lesser mark of blood when you dodge you will lay down a mark of blood which is the second one okay. mark of blood it gives you some life force it is unblockable and some regeneration to you and bleeding the enemy players of course every like uh, 10 seconds when you dodge it is it says here eight seconds but yeah it is like eight seconds because i was thinking of weapon swap and stuff like that every eight seconds when you dodge you will leave down a mark unblockable healing yourself up a little bit and granting you life force it is not written here but it, it has the same effects as your normal marks here ritual ritual <laughs> ritual of life cast lesser well of blood when reviving an ally wells of blood revive allies every pulse and this is pretty nice it means when you start reviving someone you will have four percent fast revive and an additional four percent which means eight percent um, with a with a well of blood that you will automatically apply when you start reviving someone and that allows you to get almost every revive um, once you do it the next is vampiric presence you and nearby allies sicken health with attacks this effect increases while in shroud this is just a little bit good in team fights so your allies will also get some life steal when you when they fight nearby you Unholy Mature, entering Shroud transfers conditions from allies to you, exiting Shroud consumes conditions currently on you and converts them to life force. This helps, um, I would say, quite a lot in many situations. As you saw, I got Condi Bond quite a bit and you will have not so much Condi Cleanse, you will have your healing skill, Spectral Walk and this trait line here. So you have to, how to say, stick to your uh, Shroud until you really remove the other boons like um, Immobilize, cripple and chill and afterwards go back because the damaging conditions need to be removed and if you if you have like immobilized chill and stuff like that and you just go back you might not remove bleeding or torment and therefore die again it is a little bit tricky to use properly but it it works pretty nice it is especially also good when you start reviving someone you go to your shroud and then go back and you will just um, pull all your the conditions from nearby allies to you and then just remove them as well which is pretty nice Soul Reaping, increase the amount of life force gained from all sources, which gives you 10% more life force. Uh, soul Marks become unblockable, as I said here earlier. Uh, shroud Skills can reduce recharge, which is pretty nice. Uh, when you go to your uh, Shroud, you will have shorter cooldown. 
fear of death every five seconds after when you fear someone you will grant yourself 15 percent life force and your duration is increased by 100 percent which means the condition uh, longer condition duration will not affect you at all because you already have fear on max but as i said it is for the other conditions that we will have you can see it here on your mark six seconds of chill if this guy don't remove that he's just dead <laughs> he can't do anything poison 12 seconds if he don't remove that he's almost dead fear two seconds and yeah most of your fears will be only two seconds because fear has only one second and then two seconds is the max <laughs> gain stability and break stuns when you enter shroud this is the one that is proposed to me and i just used this this time because they had a lot of people who can cc me firebrand scrapper and just like they, they are annoying to play without stability once they cc you and otherwise if you don't if you think you can handle it without the stump without stability you can also go with doomfire allowing you with your shroud f1 um, to apply burning to enemy players and you can see it here almost five seconds one stack the other attack is pretty slow but you can still do a lot of damage with like three four stacks of burning and um, it's up to you but otherwise foot in the grave is the thing to go it just allows you a little bit to sustain a little bit better you can like go like this remove some conditions uh, once you remove the conditions here you get cardi bomb you have stability and then you can use freely your elite skill this is a good combo here that you that allows you to use your healing skill properly it works every time you go into your shroud so it has no cooldown you can uh, use it all the time up uh, if you have your shroud up of course it has the shroud cooldown but otherwise it has no cooldown you can use it as often as you want just like go in go out and then wait 10 seconds you can reuse it again the next is curses this is like the damage trait line how to say it <laughs> barbed precision critical hits have a chance of cause bleeding increase bleed duration this is also one of the main reasons why you should take some amulet with critical hit chance like you see it here critical hit chance is increased you have a 75 percent crit chance and that's just pretty nice when you crit you will apply additional um, bleeding onto enemy players Plax sending your first attack after entering shroud transfers conditions which means your first attack you should try to go with dark path but most likely i like to use doom because doom hits with a 1200 range and dark path is just a little bit slower and the first attack that you will uh, land on an enemy player after you enter shroud transfers two conditions which is pretty nice if you get in candy bombed you can remove here two and then when you remove them you will get uh, three removed here as well so that's like five and especially it works pretty nice with unholy martyr because you will pull conditions from enemy allies players to you and then send them back which is pretty nice then terror fear you inflict deals damage each second which means you will have here one and two on your shroud two fears for four seconds uh, which will deal like 4k damage if you have some might even more and then the specially strong thing here is as i said if you corrupt enemy players if they have stability you corrupt them to what to fear that's right so when they have fear they will get feared away two seconds and they will have for two seconds 2k damage which is so so annoying and what makes this build so strong uh, have i talked about the others here uh, this one furious demise furious <laughs> gain fury when entering shroud gain additional precision and um, this allows you to have even higher crit chance 85 percent which means when you crit you will apply what additional bleeding that's right um yeah pretty nice allows you to crit more often and therefore be more deadlier target the weak increase critical hit chance for each condition on the foe if the enemy player has even additional crit chance uh, crit chance additional conditions you will have higher crit chance which means you can have a hundred percent crit damage and therefore quit 100 percent and therefore deal much more bleeding <laughs> lesser and fable bleed and weaken nearby foes this skill is unique per game mode blah 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 um, every 10 seconds um when entering shroud critical hits inflict weakness which means when you crit an enemy player you will apply weakness and this will occur every 10 seconds and you will also additionally apply bleeding and weakness um convert also of course one condition 
it, it works like every 10 seconds when you use your shroud after you enter and go out but you can also stay in your shroud for 10 seconds if you manage to use it properly let's go with the skills now consume conditions is your how to say it lifesaver skill because you have to try to not get damaged this skill is there to just remove conditions if you're getting corny bumped otherwise you should not be getting hit by enemy players if so you should be on your shroud then spectral walk allowing you to just make crazy moves like this one here it is your second lifesaver skill here you have to watch the timer if it starts blinking it is close to going back and then you can just pull port back this works on every spot it works no matter if it's a portable spot or I don't know if it is like the highest range that you can imagine it works always it ports you back to that spot where you started this skill is pretty great because it is a stun break first of all it grants you life force and it removes every two seconds one condition from you it used to be every second but they nerfed it a little bit and yeah it the, besides the cooldown it is like the pretty best skill for every necro build that you can play because it allows you just to make awesome play here jump down boom port back and you are out of any dangerous situation it allows you for tricky plays so try to master this as well it yeah it's just a lifesaver then the main thing that you have to use here is corrupt boon as i said again and yeah corrupting three boons from enemy players yeah, boons yeah boons into conditions it has a short cooldown after you used it for a half second or something and then you can reuse it try to use it as much as possible on enemies who are having stability that's your main purpose try to remove stability but you can also just go ahead and corrupt enemy players because if they have like protection regeneration and i don't know what three boons you can just start with corrupt boon apply your conditions and after they go with some stability you can reuse it and then you can go again here with your feast of corruption then with your death shroud to remove additional ones then i like to use summon flesh form this skill is just for me pretty awesome because it is also another lifesaver and especially if you are not so strong with necro it just allows you for some more plays you can fail more often and then just boom port back and run away uh, more advanced players might be using here uh, which one was it da, 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 da. let's see let's see it is a uh, i've seen spectral ring a lot used and what else have i seen there was another short stun break this guy though no, this, this 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 one of these people uh, let me think let me think hmm. there was a short cool uh, stun break here but never mind i don't i don't know it right now and what else can you use instead of the flesh form is also the signature plaque signet transfer conditions from nearby allies to yourself send your sent your conditions to a foe this can allow for also pretty tricky plays and what this does is it is a stun break first of all it has also 40 seconds cooldown but the flesh form has shorter actually yeah pretty nice and the strong thing here is if you have a lot of condi players you can do pretty high play with this if you're getting condi bombed you just use plaque signet transfer them to the enemy player and if you have like 10 conditions you can just transfer them back to them and just destroy them pretty heavenly <laughs> um, otherwise what i've seen a lot of people using is spectral walk a spectral ring this allows for additional other good play here uh, it is an unblockable ring which fears enemy players who cross it and you can just throw it away here and then just run into it and use your healing skill people who try to chase you down here they will get feared um what i don't like is the duration it is like it is like five seconds but most of the times it is in my opinion a little bit too short they could have made it like seven eight seconds of this and this allows you for better gameplay if you want to revive allies and yeah do tricky things in my opinion it, it just allows for tricky gameplays but it will not uh, automatically increase your survivability because it, it might work against lower players but against more advanced players they they know how to avoid it because the only thing that, that you have to do against the ring is you just stay inside or outside you don't have to cross it if you cross it you get feared if you stay here nothing will happen and that's the that's like the thing here what i don't like about it so much 
um, yeah, it is easy to avoid, how to say it. More advanced players will easily avoid this, or they will get one sphered and never again. <laughs> so guys, that was the, let's see, about, about one second, because a lot of you will ask me. Uh, to the equipment that I'm using, I'm using the Frostfire outfit with the weapons being uh, Cold Snap, Dragon's Warhorn from Ara, I guess. Ara Path Dungeon and then Mighty Spectral Walk skin it just f matches really nice with my Necromancer in my opinion and that's why I'm using it and now guys that was it if you have any questions to the normal core Necro or overall <laughs> Guild Wars 2 PvP feel free to ask me under this video in the comment sections or of course as always you can write me an email in game I will try to answer um, normally uh, in within the week now I used to within like two days but now within a week I tried to answer everything and that was it now you will see as always three of my other videos and of course you can subscribe to my youtube channel only if you like to if not don't do it that was happy no the vanilla necromancer and I see you in my next videos have a good one guys bye bye all